Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Well, hello and welcome to this episode of our program. This is Mike Saunders with Marketing Huddle, and today we have with us Dylan Ogline, who is with DylanOgline.com. Welcome to the program, Dylan. Hey, Mike. Thanks for having me. Hey, so um, give me a little bit of a background of uh, what you did before you started your consulting business, because I think that um, that's a really interesting starting point for most people when they get into consulting, because typically you have seen a problem, figured out the solution, uh, proven it, and now you have you know a use case that is something that you can move forward with and take it to your niche, your vertical, and uh, really get it, get the word out. So I'm curious to see if that uh, is something that uh, happened in your career before you started consulting. Uh, sure, yeah. Um, actually, you know, I will probably, I'll try to, you kind of need to know my whole story to kind of understand where I got uh, or how I got to where I'm at now. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to keep it short for you. So I started my first business, Mike, uh, in, in high school, actually. Uh, I was in ninth grade or so. I started selling uh, cell phones online. This is back before, you know, everybody had iPhones and, and things like that. And I started that, you know, I was ninth grade, so I was like 15 or whatnot. And uh, I sold on eBay as well, but uh, but mostly everything was online. And I started that and I was doing really good at it. Um, you know, it was back in, you know, I was 15. I was probably, you know, got to the point where I was probably making like you know, upwards of 5000 a month, <laughs> you know, which... When you're 15, that's that's a good chunk of money. Yeah. Any expenses? And this is wow, 12 to 10 or 11, 12 years ago. So, you know, back then it was pretty good. And I um, ended up uh, through a series of events. I ended up actually dropping out of high school to focus on that business. I convinced my parents to let me. Uh, event, well, first I started doing one of those um, like accredited online national high schools or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, it cost me like four or five thousand to do that, but I ended up uh, convincing them with that, and then I ended up actually dropping out of high school officially and focused fully on the business. I wanted to, you know, try to take as much take the business as far as I could. And about a month or so after I dropped out of high school, uh, again I was doing great, or so I thought at the time. I lost my merchant account, so I couldn't process credit cards anymore, and I lost it because they found out I was only fifteen. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, so um, I just quit high school, so I didn't really have anywhere to go. But I had also been – I'm an avid reader, and I, I, I had picked up – I really liked the stock market. Uh, I was really interested in that and day trading and things like that. So I wasn't spending my money. I was smart with it, and I had a bunch of savings, and I ended up started day trading at 16 Give or take. Well, just as and, a matter of curiosity, at that sure. point when you had a proven model, why didn't you set up another merchant account and joint venture with your dad or family member or somebody that was old enough to have one? Well, the problem was is is you know that I wasn't old enough to have it, and my parents were kind of like, oh no no you got it you got to get out of that business, Dylan, because you know now you're now you're blacklisted, and, and it was true. They told me you know you're added to a blacklist, so. Hmm. Uh, they were like, you know, you're not going to be able to process credit cards anymore. And I did try, uh, like going through like international routes and things like that. And it was just, it just, it kind of just like fell apart after okay. that. So, but you got uh, the book. So now you're moving on to day trading and in that world. Oh uh, yeah. I was absolutely obsessed with business when I was sick. I mean, I was, when I was in high school though, this is worth saying. I, when I was in high school, I was, I got really good grades and everything, but I like completely, quit like all the classes that I didn't need. And I would spend four, you know, I would spend half the day in study hall, just reading books on business. I was absolutely obsessed with it. So, um, then anyways, business falls apart, but I was into day trading. So this time I set up a, an account through my father. So this way it was legit and I didn't have to worry about that. And I started getting into trading Forex and futures and it was killing it. I mean, back then the market was amazing. It was, it was a lot of fun. I was making a killing at the time. It was a killing, <laughs> you know, um, it was doing really well. Um, you know, I was making upwards of like a hundred thousand a year by 19. I bought my first house. I mean, things were going great, but I noticed that the market was starting to make a shift. I traded volatility 
And I noticed that the market was making a shift to the automated platforms or automated trading. You hear about it on like CNBC and whatnot. So I took all of my money that I had saved up and basically risked it all on a startup that was developing an automated trading platform for the forex and futures markets. And basically my it was going good. Um, we were in the process of developing it, and I, my partners were doing some shady things, and it completely fell apart. Okay, and I, uh, I, I was back to square one again. Okay, I was completely broke though. But this time, I had a mortgage, I had a car payment. You know, I was nineteen, or at this point, I was probably twenty, twenty-one, something like that. And then began the struggle. So for four or five years. Um, uh, living off of credit cards, uh, trying various business ideas from one thing to the other. I couldn't get back into trading because I didn't have the capital. And on top of that, the market had shifted. So volatility wasn't there. The way I had traded wasn't there anymore. So I got into kind of like information products, tried to like work on the marketing thing there. Um, tried that. I uh, tried Kindle publishing. I tried a painting business, like painting houses and whatnot. I even I even worked... Uh, construction for a little bit, you know, just to try to make ends meet. And uh, I'm trying to wrap this story up. So then about uh, about a year or so ago, uh, a little bit more than that, probably, I had a conversation. I met two of my friends who have their own businesses, kind of like freelance businesses, met them and just started talking to them about how to grow their businesses is where the conversation led is business. And I offered to kind of like help them with marketing their business, you know, they were, it was a, my one friend had a web development business. My other friend had a, uh, a bookkeeping business and they knew how to do their businesses, but they didn't know how to get clients. And I was like, you know, I, I know a lot about this internet marketing stuff that I've learned from like these info products and things I tried getting going. Why don't you guys let me try a few things. So I worked with them and kind of tried to apply uh, the 80, 20 method. So the 20% that was going to get them 80% of the results, the most basic core things, okay? And uh, worked with them on implementing those into their businesses, and it was hugely successful. So that leads me to kind of like where I'm at now with helping other businesses with that aspect, you know, client acquisition, service-oriented businesses specifically. And that's where I'm at now. So the moral of that story is similar to a lot of success stories, which is, you know, tried, failed, tried, failed, 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 you know, and then you see some success. And then now you're focusing in on where that success is based on those message uh, or uh, lessons that you learned. So I, I just, uh, you hear that story so many times in, you know, don't insert the merchant account or the day trading and, and swap it out with something <laughs> else. And then yours is the story of so many people, but you've got a super uniqueness to it because you started off so young and and uh, secondly, you uh, uh, kind of fell into this success still so young. You think of a you know success, um, a high end consultant being in their forties or fifties, not someone mm -hmm. in their twenties. And so I think that's super interesting. And I would venture to say that through those times, you had the mental ups and downs of you know, this isn't going to work. I'm a loser. See, I knew that this wasn't going to work. I need to just go get my, you know, job over at XYZ. So talk about the right mindset to kind of weather through um, those ups and downs and the, the mindset to even prevent those things from happening. I, in terms of, of, of that up and down, I think that that is just, I don't think there's a way to prevent that really. I, and I, I, I talked to, I, I, associate with a lot of business people. So a lot of my good, good friends are business owners. And that is, that is just the way it is. Uh, that specific type of, of, I don't want to call that a mindset. I mean, I think that's just part of the game. Part of the game is that up and down. And I think maybe, maybe what people need to hear is, you know, you, you only hear about the great successes in magazines and on TV and whatnot. Everybody hears about the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world who, you know, they, they hit a, a grand slam on their first at bat. OK, and the truth is, is the vast majority of entrepreneurs and business owners are going to fail time and time and time again. And I'm, I'm going to fail a hundred more times in my life. OK, it's you keep you know, you have to just keep going at it um, and not give up. 
you know, you're going to you're going to strike out many, many times. And it's really you only have to get it right a few times. But you know, people just have to keep going and not give up. But that the the uh, not, not the mindset, but just the aspect of the ups and downs, the roller coaster is just I think this is the way it is when you're when you are a business owner. And I, I think people need to be prepared for that. There's no way to prevent it. You just need to be prepared for that and not give up hope and just keep going, keep hustling. Yeah. And you know, that, that I agree with you a thousand percent about the ups and downs can never be prevented, but what can be uh, prevented or buffered is your own perception of how devastating those things are because you're never as good as your biggest success and you're never as bad as your biggest failure. So I think that once you get that mindset for success and that, you know, never give up um, type attitude, then when that newest wave of, um, you know, failure or, Doubt. you know, because it, it's kind of like the old saying, you know, you win or you lose. Well, that's not really accurate. You win or you learn and you learn from those mm-hmm. failures. So I think that that's a really big, big piece in that mindset um, because when that next time comes, you'll you know zip over it that much quicker because you know that you can overcome it. And I think that's that's really huge. So, what are some what are some mistakes that business owners and entrepreneurs make that you have seen and worked with um, that are pretty common and, and you see them? And that's the first thing you zone, you know zero in on when you begin working with someone. The common mistakes. Um, first, as I would say, <laughs> this, is, this is probably brutally honest. I, I like to say that I, I try to be brutally honest with people, and, and it's that they don't have – people don't have what it takes, period. Mm. Um, they are simply not uh, – they're also not honest with themselves, and people need to stop making um, excuses. They, they need to realize that it's not easy, Um and, you know, it's the common excuses and things like that. And I, I'll give you an example is uh, when people talk about how they're in startup mode. Okay. And that's, that's bull. I mean, it, you know, you need to focus on, you, you, you're, you're not in, in startup mode unless you're developing a product or something like that. Okay. Um, you know, you, and another thing is people say how they're cash strapped. Okay. Well, it, and, you know, resources can be limited. Okay. Most people just aren't willing to take risk and get serious. And I, I was there too. Okay. I'm not somebody who's just preaching. Okay. Like I was there too. I was not, I don't think I lacked the discipline, but I wasn't willing to take risk. And that is a huge part of it. You need to, you need to be willing to put all your chips on the table. That's what it takes to really go next level and to build a successful business. And I see that mistake all the time. You need to get serious. You need to get focused. You know, like you said, you need to be willing to put all your chips on the table. And most, most people just aren't willing to do that. They, you know, they'll make one excuse after the other. And I think, again, brutally honest, um, the, the truth is that the people don't really have business problems. They have life problems. And most people, most businesses do have a product or service that they could sell, that they could do very well with. But they have so many limiting beliefs um, you know, so risk adverse and things like that, that cause them to fail. That's scarcity mindset. That is a huge, huge factor. Um, and then that's something I'd really like to, um, particularly like working with me, I'd really like to help people tackle that. Um, you know, I'm really, I'm really passionate about helping people, uh, you know, through the problems specifically that I've had. I actually am working on a program to help people with that specific mindset aspect. Um, I, you know, I have a bunch of great actual ideas and things like that. I just haven't systemized it in a way like I have with the marketing aspect, but um, kind of bring it full circle is, is people have a, a, that scarcity mindset. They need to get out of that. They need to be willing to take take risk and, and also be completely focused on their business. They need to breathe it, eat it, sleep it, live it. Everything needs to be focused. Yeah, on like burn the boats. Have you heard, have you heard that story? Burn the bridge? Yeah, burn the no, bridge. No, burn the boat. Have... Oh, what's the the boat? I haven't zombie. heard that one. <laughs> yeah, Google it. Um, uh, it's a really interesting story. It's it's a, like a historical story of you know this one co- conqueror that they were in the ships going to go conquer this you know new land and they oh, get they out the, the rowboat. They burnt the boat so they couldn't go back. Yeah, exactly. Yes, um, so that, that mentality. But here's, here's something that I want to clarify or get your thoughts on because I think it can be a risk 
to think too much about taking risks and how do you recommend and advise balancing you know you don't need, want to have a scarcity mindset you need to take risks but then how do you balance that ethically with giving advice to an entrepreneur or a, a small business owner and to the point where here's this needle going like I'm 20 grand in credit card debt because I'm taking some risk I'm trying to make these investments in my business and now I'm 40 grand in debt and it hadn't paid off yet at what point is taking risks too risk key um, because I agree you have to kind of take some risk and make some investments in your business because then that's when you yourself believe I'm all in but at what point is it too much at what point is it too much that's an interesting question I would say it, it's first off I guess my my advice first and foremost would be to take smart risks mm-hmm. um, I, I see so many so many people that they're focusing on the wrong thing and I guess the, what you need to do is focus on, you know, you know, instead of, you need to focus on making the cash register ring, I like to say, okay, bringing in clients, client acquisition, okay. Um, I personally spent, I mean, I, I had $100,000 in credit card debt at one point. I personally spent years focusing, not even focusing, bouncing around from one idea to the other, okay. Um, Instead of focusing on sales, on client acquisition, making the cash register ring. Okay, so I would make sure the idea was perfect or whatever I was working on was perfect before ever finding out someone would be willing to pay for it or buy it. Okay, and then when things wouldn't sell, I would, you know, I would, I would rebuild the product or scratch it and move on to the next. And and people will spend spend months trying to figure out their pricing and, and their, their their service and their offers before ever trying to sell it. Okay. Um, so as an example, okay, my client attraction blueprint, okay, that program, I, I sold $10,000 of that course. Well, this is when I got it right, okay? I sold $10,000 worth of that course before I ever built it, hmm. okay? I knew what I was selling. I knew I could provide the advice. And to add a ethical disclaimer, you could say you don't want to do something or sell a product or a service that you're not sure that you can deliver, Okay, you yeah, want no, to make you, sure that's that a common uh, approach. You had it in your head, you had it proven, but you just didn't have it on paper to deliver a worksheet to the group. So you sold the concept of it, and then you stayed one week ahead of the group and delivered it, and then the results spoke for themselves, I'm sure. Bingo. And that was the exact opposite of everything I had done before. Yeah. Okay. And I had, and that's really where the problem is, is that people are focusing. Businesses only die because they stop bringing in cash. If you're, de- if you're generating sales and you're profitable, your business is going to succeed. So that's what you need to focus on. And, of course, ethically, like I just said, you want to make sure that you're, what you're doing you're good at. But you need to focus on making the cash register ring. And that mitigates that risk, I believe. Well, let's, let's wrap this up with um, answering this question and then directing people to how do they learn more about connecting with you and, and your program. But here's the question. Um, I would suspect this is a true statement, which is another element and aspect of taking your business to the next level is, you know, the the smart calculated risk check um, and also um, getting yourself properly motivated in this sense. You just described something that lit the fire under your feet, which is you sold $10,000 of a course that wasn't tangible yet, and you had to put it together because now you had a deadline. So that goes back to deadlines and accountability. So I would suspect that a lot of your clients are, hey, you know, Dylan's fee is X, and I'm going to hold your feet to the fire, and they go, okay, and now they're all in because if your program was twenty nine dollars, they're going. Oh, I've spent that last weekend, you know, soda pop at the, you know, mm-hmm. gas station. And then when you're holding them accountable, and it was an investment on their part, now the results um, are going to take shape because they're focused on it because they want to make sure they get their own ROI. Oh, absolutely. I see the people who, um, you know, somebody who buys a twenty dollar ebook or something like that, they're not going to take action. They're not going to take any of the steps. They're not going to follow your, your program or, or, or anything like that. And it, it's silly, but yeah, I mean, and, and it also it holds um, when you charge higher ticket prices to your clients, you know, any of the, the, the people I work with, you know, I typically recommend that they, you know, charge premium prices and things like that. Um, 
when you start to do that, you hold yourself accountable as well. You know, you have to provide an exceptional service, and you're also working with much, much more dedicated clients, uh, people that are more serious and aren't just joking around. Yeah, um, I, I agree a thousand percent. So, what's the best way that people can uh, connect with you, learn more, and uh, learn more about your program? Well, uh, I have. Um, you can go to my website, Dylanogline dot com. Um, I think I, I have. I'm starting to get into the social media stuff. I got a, Facebook, Instagram, stuff like that. Um, they can come to my website, but right now, actually, I. Um, I'm actually not accepting any new clients into that particular program. I got to the point where I was taking on too many and I wasn't able to provide the, uh, the attention I wanted to. Um, it's, it's a lot of systems and things like that, that I've kind of, you know, um, processes that I've, I help people put in place, but there's still like the consulting aspect, a lot of one-on-one coaching you could call. Um, so I, I, I like to focus on helping my clients one-on-one. So right now I actually don't, um, can't even sign up to work with me, <laughs> but they can come to my website, sign up to get on my email list. And you know, whenever I have uh, more slots available, I'm, you know, I reach out to people and see if they're interested in joining. Excellent. So we'll make sure we post the um, URL to your website, dylanogline.com, in the show notes. And super uh, excited to learn more about you and your background and approach and, and just the mindset. So thank you so much for your time uh, on the interview today, Dylan. It was wonderful getting to know you. Absolutely, Mike. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.